Okay, we're there in Daniel chapter number one, and tonight I'm finally going to preach a sermon. It's been on my list of things to do ever since we started um, the church at the end of 2016. And um, tonight I'm going to preach on the subject of homeschooling. I'm going to preach on the subject of homeschooling. I mean, it's, we've, it's on our sign out there, we've got sort of things what, about what we are, what sort of church are we? We're an independent Baptist church, we're a King James church, we use the King James Bible. Um, what else is there? We're a soul winning church. I preach on that quite a lot, but it's also a thing I've got on the sign I chuck homeschooling on there. And yeah, that's probably it was a good thing I put that on there because that's why Jordan showed up. He looked he looked on the internet and looked and said, oh look, that, that church is into homeschooling. And he was homeschooling and that's why he turned up. And so it's been great having Jordan with us for all this, this year and year and a bit. But um, yeah, so I'm going to preach on the subject of homeschooling. Now, you might say, well how, how can you preach on the subject of homeschooling? I mean, you know, what have you got it on your sign for? I mean, is homeschooling something the Bible even talks about? You know, have you, have you read through and, you know, this chapter where it says homeschooling here and it says homeschooling there? Well, not, that's not really the case because, I mean, the word school itself is only mentioned once in the entire Bible. Only one time is the word school. Have, let's have a look, look, at, um, look at Acts chapter number 19. Acts chapter number 19. We'll be coming back to Daniel later on. Acts chapter, no, chapter 19 and verse number 9 is the only mention of school in the Bible. Acts chapter 19, verse number 9. It says, but when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. So this is talking about where, where the Apostle Paul, it says he's disputing daily in the school of this guy Tyrannus. So this is a place where he's, he's arguing, he's debating, he's, he's disputing. Okay, so this is, this is not a school described as being a good place, this, Guy Tyrannus, his school, it's a bad school. Okay? But that's it. There's no other mention of school in the entire Bible. Okay? So you might say, well, it's not talking about homeschool. No, it's not talking about like a you know a school you should send your children to either. It's just that's it. Um, there's also a mention of the word college. Look if you would at uh, Second Chronicles chapter number thirty four. Second Chronicles chapter number thirty four. Second Chronicles thirty four and verse number twenty two. Second Chronicles thirty four and verse number twenty two. And it says, And Hilkiah, and they that the king had appointed, went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikvah, the son of um, Hezra, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college. And they spake to her to that effect. So that's college. So you've got school and you've got college, and that's it. That, college actually mentioned as a parallel account in 2 Kings 22, um, but it's just saying exactly the same thing, basically. But the interesting thing is, when this is talking about, this is at a time when They'd, they'd actually they'd lost the Bible. They didn't even have the Bible. They got, they got discovered. They, they cleaned up the house of God and discovered, oh, look, here's God's word. And then when they looked at it, what did they find? We haven't been doing what God said to do. And that's why all this wrath has come upon us. You know, things are in a really bad state. And lo and behold, we've got Hulda, Hulda the prophetess. You know, things, things, things aren't looking in a great state. So schools, colleges, that's, that's the only mention there is in the Bible. So the Bible doesn't really mention school. Yet most people happily send their children away to school anyway, don't they? Isn't that what happens? You send your children off to school. Now, just a, just a disclaimer, just so you understand. I'm not against you if you send your children to school. Okay, If you send your children to school, I'm not against you. I went to school. Yeah. Um, my, my wife went to school. Our, our oldest ado- adopted son, he spent you know, most of his time at school. Uh, well, he was, he was there in body. He wasn't really there in mind, but... Uh, uh, we, we did have some time where he was homeschooled, and he also spent some time in a Christian school as well. Our younger children, on the other hand, including the one that's just turned 18, has never been to a public school. He's never attended a school. I mean, he's, he's been in the premises and stuff, but he's never actually he's never been enrolled at any school ever. And he's now 18 years old, and is now he's still doing a wee bit of homeschooling, but he's working a job. Okay? Um, and I'm very glad that, that these kids here in the room, that none of them have actually been to school. I'm very glad about that. Um, my wife has done and she still does a wonderful job teaching them. Okay, you know. So but you might say, well, why is it? Why are we big fans of homeschooling? Why am I a fan of it? Why is my wife a fan of it? What are some of the reasons why we think as many people as possible should homeschool their children? Why should they? Well, the very first thing, and turn if you were to Ephesians chapter number six, the very first point is that God has placed children under the authority of their parents. Okay, look at Ephesians chapter number Ephesians chapter number six. Ephesians chapter number six and verse number one. God's placed children under the authority of their parents. He's given them the responsibility to educate them. Ephesians chapter number six, verse number one says, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. 
that's probably the favourite favourite memory verse of all parents around the world. They know that one. Children, obey your parents. I think it might even be on our fridge. For this is right. <clears throat> Honour thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou must live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. So when you're admonishing someone, when you're nurturing something, there's something involved in that. You're, you're helping it. It's think, think about having a plant. If you nurture a plant, what are you doing? You're putting, like, you know, giving it water, putting some sort of nutrients, helping it to go. You're nurturing it. But also admonishing, it's kind of like correcting it, you know, stopping it when it's doing wrong, putting it in the right direction. Okay? Look at, um, look at Proverbs chapter number 6. Proverbs chapter number 6 and verse number 20. Proverbs chapter number 6. Proverbs chapter number 6 and verse number 20. Proverbs chapter 6, verse number 20 says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Notice that. Your father has commandments and your mother has got a law. There are things that your mum and your dad should be teaching you. Okay? Look back at um, uh, Colossians chapter number 3. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 20. Colossians chapter number 3 and verse number 20. Colossians 3.20 says, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. When children obey their parents, it's well-pleasing. It's well-pleasing. And the thing is, actually, when you homeschool your children, there's a lot more opportunity for the children to obey their parents or to disobey their parents. You see, because when you send your kids off to school, well, they're away with someone else. It's someone else they've got to obey. It's a teacher they've got to obey. It's, a, it's someone else that you've, you've given the responsibility to. But the thing about that is, is giving away responsibility. That's not got something God ever tells us to do. He doesn't say give away the responsibility. You know, I mean, God's given us the responsibility here of going out and preaching the gospel, hasn't he? He's given us the responsibility of doing that. Do you think we could just maybe hire someone? We could find some, you know, maybe find like a, you know, some some sort of door to door, you know, carpet salesman, carpet, you know, vacuum cleaner salesman, and pay them to go around door to door. Could could we do that? No, because God's given us the responsibility. You can't palm it off on someone else. Um, turn if you to First Samuel chapter number two. First Samuel chapter number two. We'll be here on, on Thursday night. But First Samuel chapter number two, verse number twenty two. Look at First Samuel chapter two and verse number twenty two. It says, "Now Eli, and remember Eli, he was the he was the high priest. He was the guy that was kind of like the ruler, if you like, in Israel. Now Eli was very old, and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel." And how that they lay with the woman that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So Eli's the, the high priest. He's got his sons who he ain't made priests as well. But what are his sons doing? They're sleeping with the women that are coming to church. And he said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. So Eli's found, he knows what his sons are doing. And he says to them, What are you doing this for? He says, Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. He's, like, he's telling them off. Mm-hmm. What does God have to say about this? Um, in fact, actually look at verse number 25. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord would slay them. So notice that they didn't listen to their dad. And what's God wanted to kill them. And in fact, we'll find out as we go through um, through Samuel, we'll find out that that happens. But look at um, look if you would at uh, chapter number three. Look at chapter number three of of First Samuel, and it says, "And the Lord first uh, sorry First Samuel chapter number three verse number eleven. It says, "And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end." For I've told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. So who's he hold? Who is God holding responsible for for Eli's sons? He's holding Eli. He's saying, look, you didn't restrain them. That's why your sons they're going to end up being killed because you didn't restrain them. It's your fault. Okay. Now, that's, that's sort of pretty, pretty, pretty harsh things. But the thing is, you see, if we send our children off to a public school or to a private school, is God going to hold the teacher responsible? Or is he still going to hold us responsible? He's still going to hold us responsible. He's going to hold us accountable. You know, I mean, I mean well, he's going to hold us responsible. If I send my kids off to school, so if I send these, these young girls and send them off to school, and they got taught by some teacher all sorts of things that they'd learn about. They'd learn about, 
well, they, they learn about evolution. They, and, and, and understand, my kids know about evolution. But you see, I teach my kids both things about evolution. I teach them so that they know about evolution more than the average kid who goes to school knows about it. In other words, you know, the evolutionary side. But they know the other side as well. They know both sides because my kids are educated. Okay? Whereas if they go after school, they only learn one side and they don't learn the other side. Okay? Um, but yeah, they'd learn about evolution. They'd learn about homosexuality. You know, maybe, maybe, you, maybe you should be a homo. You know, you're a little girl, maybe you should like other girls. You're a little boy, maybe you should like other, other, other boys. And that's, that, actually, it's, it's not my sermon, but just thinking about it, that's a wicked thing to tell someone. Because, do you know why it's wicked? I mean, there's a lot of reasons why it's wicked, apart from the fact that God calls an abomination. Every little boy, who do little boys generally like playing with? Little boys. And who do little girls like playing with? Little girls. And so if you tell them, maybe this is what you are, you're same-sex attracted. What a stupid thing to say. It's normal for boys to hang out with boys and girls. You know, you ever heard of girl germs and boy germs? Isn't that, that's, that's what it's like, isn't it? But if some person's putting this perverted thought into a child's mind, that can distort their mind. That can distort their thinking. Yeah. Oh, maybe there's something wrong with me. You know? And what did Jesus say? He said, it's, if you offend one of these little ones, he said, it's better that there, were, yeah. that there were a millstone tied about your neck and you were cast into the midst of the sea. You offend these one of these little ones. But hey, but so, so just take your kids and send them off. Because that's what they'll be taught. Make no mistake, that is exactly what they'll be taught. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll teach them inverted values of what's right and what's wrong. You know, that, that it's, that they'll, not to mention what they'll be exposed to at schools. I mean, any school you go to, you'll be exposed to drugs. Isn't that the case? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it used, it used to be high schools, but I think it's, I think it's younger than high schools now. You know, um, filthy language. You know, pornography. I mean, you know, none of our kids have got smartphones. Never have had. But if they go off to school, who? what are the people at school going to have? Smartphones. And what's on the smartphones? The internet. So what's there? Pornography. It's all there. Okay, and who's watching them? Well, the kid teacher's there sometimes. But a lot of the times, I mean, you know, what one teacher with, what, 25, 30 kids? You know, um... And do you think they care about your kids as much as you do? You know? No, I understand. I'm not knocking teachers. There are plenty of great teachers that really care for kids. But they don't care for your kids as much as you do. They don't. Okay? I mean... So, I mean... I mean and to be honest, if you just even think about those things I've just mentioned there. I mean, I think it's, it's best, even for non-Christians. If I was a non-Christian, I recommend, hey, don't send the kids to, to school. There's so many bad things there. They'll teach them things that'll just, that'll just mess up their minds. And some of the things I've seen lately, it's just like, why are people going... It's like people have lost even the capacity to think. Logical, rational thought. You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. Crazy. Okay, but the thing about it is, is the responsibility lies with the parents. It doesn't lie with the government. I mean, the Bible, the Bible talks about the government and what the government's job is. Look at Romans chapter number 13. And Romans chapter number 13. The Bible... The Bible doesn't teach that we should have no government. But the thing is, governments have a responsibility. They have a, they have a job to do. And it's not educating people's children. That's not their job. Because guess what? When governments educate children, they do a bad job. I mean, some governments have been really into educating children. You know, yeah, I can think of some. I think over in um, communist, you know, in, in, in the Soviet Union, they were right into that. Hitler was right into that. Compulsory education. You've got to sit. Did you know homeschooling to this day is still illegal in Germany? Yeah. Did you know that? You cannot homeschool your kids in Germany. Why not? Because it was made illegal by Hitler. And it still is. They haven't changed it. You know, there are people in Germany who had their kids taken off them. You know, there were people who wanted to homeschool their kids. They were going to leave the country and they took the kids off them. They wouldn't even let them leave the country because they wanted to go somewhere else and homeschool them. Okay? So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a bad... Sorry, what was I... Oh, that's right, yeah, governments. Um, Romans chapter 13. It says in Romans 13, verse 1, says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive themselves damnation. So understand, higher powers are put in place by God. We, we read, children obey your parents in the Lord. 
The idea of, of there being a parent-child relationship and one being an authority over the other, God ordained that. You know? The idea that, I mean, within a church, the Bible talks about a pastor having authority. The pastor has authority within the church. Okay? That's something that's God's ordained. Having a government, having rulers, and that's what we're about to read about now. It says, look, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So what's this minister of God, this, what's this ruler supposed to be doing? He's supposed to be carrying a sword, and he's supposed to be executing wrath upon him that doeth evil. That's what they're for. They're there to punish evildoers. You know, murderers, rapists, people that do bad things. That's what they're for. Now, nowadays, murderers or rapists, no one's going to come after you with a, with a, with a sword. No one's going to come after you to do anything to you, are they? Um, he says, Wherefore you must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For for this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Notice that, they're God's ministers attending continually. In other words, that's what they're supposed to be doing all the time. That means that they're not supposed to be going off and doing all these other things. All these other thing that, things that governments do. Running people's lives. When, and the fact is, when you, I mean, you put these, these bureaucracies in charge of doing things, I mean, how good are they? I mean, look at just what we've got at our local government. Look at the council. I mean, you know, the cycleway. It's great, isn't it? It's great. I was sitting at the traffic lights waiting to, to go across. And as I was sitting there, you know, cars have got a green light. But there's a car sitting there, and it couldn't turn. Why? Because the, the, the red cycle light was on. Yes. Now, there's no cyclists within 100 miles, but, you know, you've just got to sit there and wait. Because someone decided, let's spend millions of dollars on this thing. And they keep, we'll change it to this side, change and, you know, and, and anyone with half a brain will look at it and say, look, the cycleway is more dangerous. It's more dangerous. You know, you look at that intersection up the road where they've got these, all these multiple lights, and it's to make it safer. It's no safer. But it's just treating someone, it's treating someone like a baby. Because what? Because they're trying to parent you. That's what they're trying to do. They're just trying to take that role and be your parent. Okay, but no, God has ordained that it's supposed to be government. But where did it say here, and they're supposed to teach your people's children? It didn't. Now, Hitler wanted to teach your children. Stalin wants to teach your children. You know, um, Jacinda Ardern, yeah, she's pretty keen on teaching your children. Helen Clark's keen on teaching your children. In fact, they want to get it early as possible. Let's send the preschoolers off. Get them as soon as possible. As soon as possible. You know, get the woman out working. We'll have your children, and we will teach them. And we'll see a bit later where that, where that leads. Okay, so... but. Yeah, it res the responsibility for teaching, it doesn't lie with the government, and it doesn't lie with the church either. It doesn't, it's not the church's responsibility to teach your children, it's your responsibility. The church's responsibility is to look, preach the gospel, you know, baptise believers, and then teach the people all things whatsoever I've commanded you. But it's not the church's job to provide a Sunday school to teach your children. It's not. It's your job to teach your children. Because what? Well, if you're going to do that, that means you have to know You've got to learn the Bible yourself. And the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So God's placed children in authority. He's under the authority of their parents. He's given them the responsibility. And the thing is, God has given the job of teaching children to the parents. He's given that job. Not only has he given them authority, he's given them, this is your job to teach your children. Look at Deuteronomy chapter number 6. Deuteronomy chapter number 6 and verse number 5. Deuteronomy chapter number 6 and verse number 5. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse number 5. And it says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post, posts of thy house and on thy gates. Don't need to turn there, but Isaiah 38, 19 says, The father to the children shall make known thy truth. God's word, I mean, look, look, at, um, look, at, look at Proverbs chapter number 4. Look at Proverbs chapter number 4. 
Proverbs chapter number 4. I mean, this whole chapter's just got streams of stuff. Look at Proverbs chapter number 4. Verse number 1 of Proverbs 4 says, Look, hear ye children the instruction of a father. Whose instruction? The father's instruction. And attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake you not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, so he said, Look, I'm teaching you, and my father taught me. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. He's saying, look, this is what you need to be learning, and learning it from your father. Forsake her not, talking about wisdom, and she shall preserve thee, love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. You see, you should be learning wisdom. Learning wisdom from your father. Learning wisdom from your mother. Because you see, if you go to school, then instead you're going to be learning wisdom from... The teacher. Now, some teachers have got wisdom. Some teachers haven't. You know? I mean, the Bible says, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. If you've got a teacher that believes that you evolved from a monkey, that you came out of the slime, he believes there's no God, what would the Bible describe him as? The fool. So he's going to teach you wisdom? No. Okay? Not any. I mean, I was talking to someone out of just, just just yesterday, and, um, and this bit somehow, you know, he started trying to talk about education, and he was saying how you know the nuclear family is bad, and and he and, and he was saying about how you know um, we all need to learn from one another, like schools, you know, within, within the family, within the family, it's like you know it should be like everyone gets a vote, and um, and at schools it should be where all the, the children all decide what's going to go on. But the Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. So if you're going to learn from the other kids, you know. I mean, it's crazy. It's like, okay, so, so my students are going to come along and they're going to teach me, you know, they're going to decide what goes on in the class. You know, what the half of them that actually turn up to class, you know. <laughs> or maybe the half that don't come, maybe they'll decide what's on in class. Um, crazy idea. But look, it says, look, talking about wisdom, exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall, she shall bring thee to honour and thou dost embrace her. Verse 9, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Look at verse number 10. Hear, O my son. And receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I've led thee in the right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straight, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. You can, you can hear the urgency coming out of the father's voice, out of the mother's voice, teaching the, the son, saying, look, listen. Listen, because they know what a difference it's going to make. And then here's the warning. Look, enter not into the path of the wicked. And go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. And you'll find evil men at school. And understand, I'm not saying that they're all like that. Don't misunderstand me. But they are there. How many people have been molested at school? How many teachers? How many times have you seen in the newspaper teachers molesting? You know? I mean, there's one came out the other day and it was like, and this guy, was he still at school? He was retired. And I remember this guy, because back when I, when I was a kid, I remember he used to play tennis in our tennis club. I remember him. And, that was, and then he was probably in his 30s. Well, now he was in his 60s or 60s or 70s. And it's just come out he's been molesting all these kids for years and years and years. And is that a rare thing? No. Um, Enter not into the path of wicked, go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not except they've done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. So I remember my father went on a school camp. He went on a school camp. Mm-hmm. And he was with these people. And I remember, and some of these, I mean, they were teachers. You know, some of them were like the head of departments and stuff. And, and one of them went on and became a member of parliament. And what were they? They were drunks. Every night, the kids are often supposed to be in bed, and the teachers were all gathered around sitting drinking whiskey, and they were legless. Now, who's looking after the kids? Didn't bother them. It's crazy. He said, they sleep not except they have done mischief. Their sleep is taken away, and except they cause them to fall. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence, but the path of the justice is a shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Wicked people... They're in the dark. They're stumbling around blindly. And they're going to teach you? Jesus said, if the blind lead the blind, what's going to happen? They'll both fall into the ditch. 
Mm. He says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. That means be careful what goes into your heart. And how do things get into your heart? Through your eyes. Through your ears. It goes in. When you see something, you can't unsee it. When you hear something, you can't unhear it. He says, look, keep it, guard it. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Well, if you go to school, are you going to be far from perverse lips, or are you going to be hanging around with perverse lips? You'll be hanging around with perverse lips. Let thine eyes look right on, let thine eyes look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. So it's a warning. It's a, it's a serious warning. God's given the, the job of teaching children to the parents. Not to some school. He's given it to the parents. Not only that, but as believers, we should be separated from the world. We should be different from the world. Look at uh, Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12 and verse number 2. Romans chapter 12 and verse number 2. says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind that may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Be transformed. Don't be conformed to the world. Don't be like the world. Well, guess what? If you send your kids off to the school, what are they going to be like? They'll be like all the other kids there. They'll be like the world. Well, because that's what their, their friends are dressed like this and this or their... I want to wear the same as them. You know? I mean, none of my kids had you know, cell phones when they were younger. And obviously, you're going off and working a job, you know, fair enough. But... If they were going off to primary school and intermediate, where all the kids have got cell phones, how hard would it have been? Because it's, I mean, it's normal for a kid to think, well, they've got it, why can't I have it? <coughs> Isn't that normal? Mm. It's normal. Okay? And it's just like, I mean, it's just like you try, do you want your kids to eat healthy food? Or do you just want them to have junk food 24-7? Just lollies and chips and that's all they eat. But if you send them off to somewhere where all the other kids ate the equivalent of just junk food, that's what, they, that's what they're going to want. But if you keep them in an environment where it's like normal and natural to eat good food, it's like, okay, yeah, hey, have some sweets now and again, that's fine. But all the time, um, we should be different. Be different from the world. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 says, And be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And obviously we often use this one in the context of marriage. A believer should marry a believer, not an unbeliever. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with infidel? Saying unbelievers shouldn't be with un sorry, believers shouldn't be with unbelievers. Well, why are you sending your, if you've got a, a believing child, send them off to be with unbelieving teachers and unbelieving kids? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye the temple of God of the living God is God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. He says, Come out and be separate. Come out and be separate. Saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Um, look at oh don't you turn there, but Jeremiah, to turn if you go to first John. First John chapter number two. Why did you read Jeremiah ten two says, Learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen. You're there in first uh, John chapter number two. Look at first John chapter number two and verse number fifteen. First John chapter two verse fifteen says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It's not of the Father, but it's of the world. It says, look, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. We shouldn't be loving the things of the world. We should be different. We should be separated from the world. Um, look at Proverbs chapter number 19. Proverbs chapter number 19 and verse number 27. Proverbs chapter number 19 and verse number 27. It says, cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causes us to err from the words of knowledge. He says, look, stop listening to instruction that causes you to err, to be in error from the words of knowledge. There is instruction you can listen to that will cause you to, to err. And guess what? That's what you'll hear at school. You'll hear it, hear it at school. Um, what about Psalm, chapter number 1? We know Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. 
and his Lord, that he meditate day and night. And he should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall it wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Doesn't that sound good? Well, what did it start with? Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So whose counsel are you listening to at school? You know, what way are you walking in at school? What seat are you sitting in at school? Okay, the Bible has plenty of warnings. 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. You want your kids to have good manners? You want them to have bad manners? Send them off to school. You know? It's just a fact. I mean, I, I, the people you're around influence you. I remember there was, there was a time at school when I was playing in a, in a soccer team and there was a guy there that just every single, it was like every second word he spoke was the F word. Just, it was just F word after F word. Do you know what happened when I played in the soccer team and that, there was a year when we were there at the same time? I started swearing more. No, I used to swear. I'm mean, an unsaved kid. It was not, but why? Because I was around him. I just started swearing more. Why? The Bible says evil communications corrupt good manners. And I didn't even have good manners to start with, but they got worse. Now, some people will object to the idea of homeschooling. And they'll say things like, look, you're sheltering your children from real life. You're sheltering your children from real life. It's, it's not natural. It will impair their development. But in fact, the opposite is actually the case. You see, it's true that homeschooling does shelter children from things that can harm them. You know? But I mean, you know, putting a roof over your children's head, that shelters them as well. You know? I know are you guys glad there's a roof over your heads? Or would you like to go home and there's no roof and just get rain on? I mean, think about it. Being sheltered, it's not a bad thing. But the idea that government schools is anything like real life, that's absurd. You know, unless you're referring to real life maybe in a prison... Yeah, there's similarities there, you know, where, where, you know, I mean, where do you get segregated with 30 other people of the same age, often of the same sex? On, on the one hand, some things are very strictly enforced, you know, like when and where you're supposed to be. And at the same time, all sorts of crazy behaviour is tolerated. It does. You know, it's like a prison. They've got very strict things, and at the same time, yeah. drugs are all go yeah. in the prison, you know. Verbal and um, physical abuse, mm. harassment, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's common, isn't it? It's not, it's not, ran, it's not rare. Yeah. It's normal. Mm. If you send your kids off to school, they will be subject to that. Yeah. Um, things that you know, would never be put up with in most homeschools. You know, no, I understand. I'm not, am I saying that all homeschools are perfect? No, not at all. Are there people who homeschool and it's just... Good grief, they would be better in a, in a, in a, in a school. I, I think that probably is the case somewhere. Okay? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, things that wouldn't be put up with in most home schools, they can make attending school a nightmare for many children. Bullying, extortion, peer pressure to engage in all sorts of self-destructive behaviour in order to be accepted. I mean, just, just curious, I mean, how, many, how many young girls do you think they are, there are that are you know, in a normal home school, they've been homeschooled their whole life, you know, they're, they're at home and, and, and they're, they're cutting themselves. Mm. How many of them do you think there are? You know? Uh, is that what they all are? Mm. You know, and you picture this girl. She's, she's got her black makeup on. You know, she's a goth. She's, she's cutting herself. She's, mm. she's just, you know, into all this sort of bizarre stuff. She, I mean, she wants to die. Mm. Now, who do you think she is? Do you think she's a homeschool kid or do you think she's off at some school with other people that are in that same messed up state? Now, am I saying everyone at school is like that? No, of course not. You know, I mean, understand, just because you're in this situation, and, and we saw that with Daniel. Daniel, he was put in the way with, with the Babylonians. He was taught the way of the Babylonians. And yet he was able to still stand strong. He did. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they did. But there was a lot more young Jewish boys than those guys. Those are the only ones we hear about. You know, when, remember the, the, the statue, the image, they're all bowing down and Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego are? Well, where are, the other, where are the other young Jewish boys? I think they might have been bowing down. Because there was only three of them. And yet there was a whole pile more than that that were taken into captivity. Okay? You know, the Bible says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You know? If you want to wreck your children's life, hey, send them off to a school. Send them off to a school. Mm -hmm. Now, am I saying it's impossible to go to a government school and turn out okay? Obviously not. Obviously not. 
You know, Daniel, great example of this. But the thing about it is, although people can do what's right, or do what's wrong, in spite of what they're taught, most of the time, we're going to be heavily influenced by our environment. You know, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they were the exception. Kids that go to, you know, a school, and are taught all sorts of rubbish, and yet come out still thinking what's right, doing what's right, they're the exception. You know, just like someone who's, who's homeschooled and taught all the right things and given the right environment and turns out to be some wicked person. They, they, they do exist, but, but, but they're the exception. You know, Proverbs 22.6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's a promise from God. He says, look, train up a child in the way he should go. Not Actually, no, is that a promise? That's a command. Yeah. Train up a child in the way he should go. Um, look at Psalm 78 Psalm 78 <clears throat> Psalm 78 and verse number 1 Psalm 78 and verse number 1 it says give ear O my people to my law incline your ears to the words of my mouth for I will open my mouth in a parable I will utter dark sayings of old which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children Showing to the generation to come the praise of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Notice, the fathers to the children shall make known thy truth. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Turn to Proverbs chapter number 19. Proverbs chapter number 19. You see, one of the primary reasons why children go to school is in order to learn. Is it? The primary reason to go to school, that's supposed to go there to learn, to receive instruction. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20 says, Hear counsel, receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. But of course, remember, there is an instruction that causes us to, you know, to, to depart from the words of knowledge, isn't there? There's a good instruction. But there's a bad instruction. Proverbs 1 2 says, Look, that's the purpose of the Proverbs to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the, wisdom, the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity. Look at Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 7. Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 7. This is a key point. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord. Are your kids going to learn the fear of the Lord if they go to school? Is that what they'll learn? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. What's the next verse say? My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. But the thing we need to understand is, look, you can learn without being taught in government schools. I mean, look, the greatest example you could look for is, um, look at John chapter number 7. John chapter number 7, and verse number 15. John chapter number 7, and verse number 15. John chapter 7 and verse number 15. Oh, look at verse number 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the new Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? So how did Jesus know? Without learning. How could, how could, he hasn't gone and gone through all the, you know, gone through the schooling system. He hasn't gone through our instruction. How, how can he know? Well, because you see, you don't need to go to, to a school to learn. You know? In fact, I mean, the most basic things you need to learn, first things you need to learn, you need, need to learn to read, you need to learn to write, you need to learn some basic maths, and then learn to love learning. And then, hey, there's a world of books out there. And get out there and learn. You know? I, mean, I shouldn't say this guy because I work at a university, but honestly, people waste all this money at university. Yeah. There's nothing you learning at university that you couldn't learn for free. Right. You know? Now there are specific things where you've got to go through the gateway to get the particular qualification. If you want to be a lawyer, you have to go through that to get that certificate to be a lawyer. You want to be a doctor, you know, there, there are things where you've got to go, you have to do that. And it's a bit of a have, really. But that's what you've got to do. Mm. But for so much of the stuff, you know, it's just all there for free. You know what you work with computers, guess what? It's all there for free. You know, 
Um, but you can learn without going through some government-sponsored thing. It says in 2 Timothy 3.16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's proper for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. See, that's the best sort of instruction to get. Instruction in righteousness. Some people might say, but hang on, but I can't do it. Homeschooling sounds great. It, yeah, it would be good for the kids. But I can't do it. Would well, you think God would have said, fathers, mothers, teach your children, if we couldn't do it? Do you think he would have said it? No, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing is, if you meet home, people who homeschool their children, I mean, they're just like everyone else. Some of them, you know, some of them have got tertiary education. Some of them have just, some of them didn't finish high school. All sorts of different levels. But even having said that, there's been a whole pile of studies have done which have showed that homeschool children perform better, on average, than children in government schools. Like a lot better. It's not just a wee bit. It's significantly better significantly better. Mm. Now, does it happen in all cases? No, obviously not. Um, but, I mean, what do we see with Daniel? What, 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 did the, what did the king find out about him? He said, they found out they were ten times better. They were ten times better. Now, I don't think it was because of the Babylonian instruction, because everyone was receiving that. Okay? Because why? Because these, these were righteous. These were righteous um, children. Um. So, you know, to say that someone won't receive as good an education in a home school, that's just not true. Mm. It's just not true. You know, I mean, what children need? Children need time. They need attention, which you can give children a lot more of that. You know, you at home with your half a dozen kids compared to one teacher with 30 kids, which one do you think is better? Which one do you think is better? And, and, and the thing is, it's actually a normal thing, because in your normal family, you have, what, children of different ages. And that means that children learn to relate to people of different ages. That's normal. Hanging about with people that are all the same age as you, that's abnormal. It's only going to exist at school. It's the only place it exists. No, it does exist anywhere else. It's not the real world. It's this weird thing. And that's why children that you know, are in that environment, they relate to people older and younger. You know? I mean, I've, I mean, I've lost count of how many times I've been complimented on my kids. Because they, they talk to people normally. They can talk to adults. Why? Because they're used to pulling people from a different age. You know, you know, and um, yeah, they need they need time, they need attention, they need love, they need opportunity. Those are the things that will help them to excel, and they can excel. You know, whatever whatever sort of field, whatever field they're interested in. You know, I remember that um, my boys they went in a um, uh, there's like a, a competition, um, a top schools. You know, all the schools in town they have sports competitions. They compete in different sports. And so, you know, the, the lady was nice enough to allow our boys to go in um, to enter a homeschool team. And so they entered it, and I think it was about the third year they were in it, that they won. They got the, the top school. And the following year, they won it again. They would have won it this year as well, except Daniel was working on the day, so he couldn't play, and Nathan ended up being injured then anyway. But, so the top school at Squash in Dunedin was homeschool. It wasn't OBs, you know, it wasn't Kings, it wasn't all these great prestigious schools, it was homeschool. Just some high school kids. They were the best. Mm. You know? Yeah. Because it's not about... It's about what effort the people put in themselves. That's, right. That's what it's about. Okay? Now, some people... Here's another thing some people will say. They'll say, but look, you should send your kids to school to let their light shine. Mm. You know, we're all familiar with that. Um, Matthew chapter number 5. Matthew chapter number 5. Um, verse number 14. Matthew chapter number 5. Verse number 14. The Sermon on the Mount. He says... Uh, yeah, the light of the world, a city set on a hill cannot be hid. Set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So say, look, your kids need to go off and shine their light at school. They need to shine their light. That's how people are going to get saved. Well, I've got a, 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 a much easier, better way than that. It's going cool. Go and knock on people's door and preach the gospel to them. And because if you try and do that at school, you'll actually get in trouble. If you do it during class, you'll get in strife. And if you try and do it, you know, during the other time, you'll probably get ridicule from, from kids. That would probably be the case. Okay? I mean, if we want to let our, our kids let their light shine, I mean, should we let their light shine? Maybe we should let them down the pub. Like, send the kids, I'm going to send them off down the pub, let them shine the light down there. You know, go to the worst part of town, go shine your light down there. 
Why don't we do that? Because it's dangerous. It's dangerous. We want to protect our kids. You know, so they need to be trained first. I mean, I mean, be realistic. Look at look at Judges chapter number eight. You know, I mean, adults have enough trouble preaching the gospel. Never mind children. And hey, should children preach the gospel? Absolutely, absolutely. I think I think uh, my daughter. She's probably going to be the next door knocker that's, that's going out there soon. I can see she's been training up. Joshua chapter number eight, verse number eighteen. Joshua chapter eight and verse number eighteen. What am I, Joshua? Judges. Sorry, I'm in the wrong book. Um, Judges, excuse me, Judges chapter number <coughs> Judges chapter number 8 and verse number 18 and this talk about Gideon <coughs> then said unto Zebra and Zalmanah what manner of men were they whom he slew at Tabor and they answered and said answered, as thou art so were they each one resembled the, king, the children of a king and he said they were my brethren even the sons of my mother, mother as the Lord liveth if you'd saved them alive I would not slay you and he said and to Jether, his firstborn, up and slay them. So Gideon says to his firstborn, get up and kill these, these kings. They've, been, they've, fought, you know, they've, they've captured them, and he says, kill them. But the youth drew not a sword, for he feared, because he was yet a youth. So is it normal for a young person to be scared? It is. It's normal. Don't think there's anything abnormal about that. That's normal. Guess what? I was much more scared when I was a youth than I am now, because I'm an adult. You know? Then Zebra and Zalmana said, Rise thou and fall upon us, for as is the man's soul is his strength. And Gideon arose and slew Zebra and Zalmana and took away the ornaments from the camel's necks. So he did it himself. But his, his, his son was a youth. So are we going to send our kids off to do stuff that, that even adults are often scared to do? Now, there's no need to be fearful. You know, I mean, honestly, people are scared of things that it's actually not, it's not really anything to be really... When you, when you do it, you realise it's, it's actually no big deal. You know, it's all just in your mind. But anyway, you know, the thing is, we, we give children things when they're ready for them, not beforehand. That's why it's dangerous to send an impressionable child to a school where they're going to be taught all sorts of nonsense by an authority figure. You send your young child off to school, they'll be looking up, they'll look up to their teacher. They'll look up to their teacher, you know, and the teacher, what are they going to teach them? You know, evolution, you know, maybe you're a homo, you know. Right and wrong, turn on set. I mean, like, like we saw in the morning sermon. We talked about, you know, in the morning sermon, about some of those bizarre, with the idea that innocent until proven guilty. And there are now people, a lot of people, who that concept is just like, it goes over the head. The idea that someone's innocent until proven guilty. So someone makes an accusation against someone, that doesn't mean they're guilty. It doesn't. But in today's world, if you make an accusation, you know, they're guilty. Because people haven't learned the basics of right and wrong. I mean, I, I, was, I was reading this thing, my, my wife was reading and telling me about it. This, this, um, there's a principal up at, at some Hamilton school. And she did this speech. And she delivered a tough message to students, it said. And basically she was, she was telling them that, you know, if you play truant, if you wag school, this is what's going to happen to you. Your chances of being raped go up. Your chances of being on drugs go up. Your chances of, you know, you name it, go up. And she's saying, don't do that. You know, she said, I don't want you guys to be losers. Work hard. Make something of yourself. There was nothing, now, there was nothing wrong with what she said. Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with what she said. Some parents did. What did they say? They said something like, um, uh, oh, what was the words they used? It was basically sort of, they, they said that it was, it was speech that made the children feel bad. You know, and I mean, not only that, I mean, after it happened, there were some parents that wrote in and complained. And then the children all protested. About 100 kids didn't even turn up to school. They all deliberately wagged. They wagged. Okay? And what, what it would sit here, um, yeah, 100 Fraser High School students left school at 10 a.m. on Monday and protest over their principal speech on Thursday. Uh... It says the school had been tagged, property had been destroyed, a fire alarm had been kicked off the wall by angry students. Others had cried after the assembly, he said. Um, I mean, it's kind of a bizarre... Doesn't it sound... For, I mean, as I say, I don't keep too much track of news, but isn't this, didn't this happen when, when Trump got elected over in the States? Didn't people walk out of schools and stuff? and People were basically rolling on the ground and lighting fires and... They were, weren't they? 
I mean, what sort of a bizarre concept is that? You know? I mean, you know, whether you, you, know, whether you dislike the guy, as a lot of people seem to dislike him. I mean, you know, if you lose, it's like you don't throw a fit. That's something that babies do. And that's what you should be taught. You know, there are some things that are right and there are some things that are wrong. Is there, is there anything wrong with telling a kid, look, if you do this, then it's more likely that this is going to happen, so you might not want to do that. It's like warning them. I think that would be a good thing to warn them. You know? I mean, how about warning someone? I mean, don't they warn people about smoking in school? Yeah, they do, don't they? Warn someone about smoking. How about this? Instead of teaching someone, hey, you're a girl, maybe, maybe you should be a boy. Because not just that, not just maybe, you know, if you're a girl, you might like girls. If you're a girl, maybe you should be a boy. If you're a boy, maybe you should be a girl. Maybe you're really a transsexual. Well, wouldn't the honest thing to be say, well, by the way, you know, transsexuals, you realise their suicide rate is like, you know, ten times higher. Ten times higher. You know? Wouldn't it be something to warn people about? If you're thinking of going down this path, be aware. And it's not, oh, it's, and it's because of, oh, it's because of the persecution and the, and the stuff that goes, no, because it's, it doesn't matter. People who are out and people who aren't, same suicide rate. It's ten times higher. It's a massive, massive amount. So, just to wrap up, when God's people get educated by the heathen, by unbelievers, they become like the heathen. They become like unbelievers. You know? I mean, Daniel, what do we see? There was very few that resisted the king's command, wasn't there? You know? And that's the thing. If you send your kids off to school, the Bible says when the blind lead the blind, they'll both fall into the ditch. Now, we know that children, the Bible says, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Children are naturally foolish. You send them off to a school to be taught by someone who says there is no God. Well, the Bible says the fool has said in his heart there is no God. So you're sending a foolish child to be off to be taught by a fool. A fool is leading a fool. They're going to fall into the ditch. They're going to end up in all sorts of strife. Last couple of scriptures we'll look at. Look at, um, look at Malachi. Malachi chapter number four. Malachi chapter number four. <clears throat> Malachi chapter number four. This is what should happen. Malachi chapter number four, verse number five. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Look at this, verse number 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So God's warning, he's saying, look, their children, the father's heart should be towards their children. Fathers should care for their children, and children should care for their fathers. It says, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. It's a big warning. When parents don't love their children, and when children don't love their parents, bad times. Real bad times. Look at Matthew chapter number 10. Matthew chapter number 10. Matthew chapter number 10 and verse number 16. Matthew chapter number 10 and verse number 16. It says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in, your, in the, their synagogues. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. And this is talking about sort of what's going to happen in the end times, in the last days. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Holy but sorry, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Can you imagine that? Parents and children. Parents wanting to kill their children and children wanting to kill their parents. Can you imagine that happening? I mean, we've seen it in our world where you see you know, these wicked cases of abuse where, 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 where parents do wicked things to their kids. And people who do that, they should be put to death. But even among... Can you imagine children who want their parents to be dead? That's, that's much rarer. Wouldn't it be that? That would be a strange, you know, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a wicked, abominable thing. But for a children to want their parents to be dead, that's a hard thing to imagine. Because even a child that's mistreated by their parents will still genuinely love their parents. It's a bizarre thing. How could this happen? How could this happen? Because I think what's going to happen is because in the last days, there's going to be a whole pile of kids that they weren't really raised by their parents. 
So they don't have love for their parents. They don't have devotion to their parents. They were raised by the government. And so they've got devotion to the government. They love the hand that feeds them. They've been taught. And you think, oh, that's bizarre, that's strange, that's never happened. It's happened already. It's happened within the last hundred years. You know? It's happened within the communist bloc. It's happened in these different places where the state has taken over. And, and you think, oh, this is just some conspiracy theory. The Bible says, in Revelation it says, there's going to be one world government. One world government. And it's going to be ruling over the entire world. It's going to be one world religion. Guess what? It's not going to be Bible-believing Christians. We'll be the people that are being put to death. And if you're sending your children off to be taught by the government schools, they'd be taught in a whole, whole pile of different set of values. Different values than what's in this book. Completely different values than what's in this book. Um, you won't bother turning the Last scripture I'll just mention is that the Bible says, I have no greater joy in 3 John, verse 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. You want your children to walk in truth? Then teach them the truth. Mm-hmm. Teach them the truth yourself. Mm-hmm. Don't send them off to someone else who's going to teach them things that aren't true. Mm-hmm. Bring them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Homeschooling. You won't find that phrase, homeschooling. But it's a concept that, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd been saved for long and started reading the Bible and I thought, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Mm. It does. I mean, can you, can you imagine, can you picture the Israelites who had all this instruction taking their kids and like, let's send, pop them on the bus and send them off to be educated by the Philistines. <laughs> can you imagine that happening? Mm. Well, if they did, what would come back off that bus? Little Philistines. That's what would happen. Because they've been taught, they've been brought up by them. But we shouldn't be like that. Come out and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Be not conformed to this world. We should be a peculiar people, the Bible says. We should be different. Guess what? And honestly, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to boast or brag. I think my children are different. They are. Because the number of times people have come up to me. You know, worldly, ungodly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I've even had drunk people have come up to me and said about your kids. Yeah. Now, are they are they're good kids. Are they perfect? No, they're not perfect. But we've just taught them the Bible. We've taught them what's right and what's wrong. Mm-hmm. Different than what you learn yeah. at the school. And it's just oh, and it's just you. No, because there's many, many other, yes. you know, homeschooling families many other Christian families that do the same thing. And guess what? They're different. And that's what we're supposed to be like. We're supposed to be. We are supposed to be. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is heaven. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for your word. And Lord, I just pray you'd help each one of us to love our kids enough. And I understand there's different people in different situations. That you know, Some, people, some people's children are already grown and, and it's too late. Some people... Um, you know, they're in situations where, where they're unable to do that. But at least let everyone acknowledge, hey, this, is, this would be the ideal. This is what I want. Maybe if I can't do it for my children, maybe I can help so that my grandchildren can be homeschooled. Help us to, to love you, Lord. Help us to serve you. Help us to love our children. Children, help, help us to, to love our parents. Help us to be a, a godly example shining the light around us. We thank you and praise you and love you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen.